Hey everyone, this is Koshik here with uh, a good friend of mine, Calvin, and today we'll solve all the world's problems in 10 minutes. So join us for this live feed. Yeah, we'll drag it out to 10 minutes. We could probably do it in four. <laughs> so the rest, the rest is just gonna be, uh, it's just gonna be fluff. So um, join us in our office. So uh, you to take the seat, Ray, and uh, we'll just set everything up. Oh, what a beautiful day to do this. Perfect, perfect. Oh, <laughs> marvellous, marvellous. Yeah, so um, here we are. Hello, hey Kate, how you doing, darling? It's good to know you're on board. Um, Kate's lovely, lovely, mm -hmm. awesome person, very switched on. Mm. Um, so yeah, um, Let, let's, let's begin a little bit with uh, our background so that people... Uh, you, you're, you're more yeah. interesting than I am, so you, <laughs> so you, can, go, you can go first. Yeah, Do so, Dr. K. Yeah, so uh, my, my personal background has been in uh, neuroscience. I've worked in uh, neuroimaging for the last six years and uh, done a PhD in that and um, worked with developing brain technology to improve uh, mental health. And yeah, that's a little bit about myself. and. Oh, but me, I'm, I'm, I'm the boring one. So, um, former banker and uh, management consultant, turned professional martial arts coach and um, high performance living consultant. So, um, my angle here is really coming in from um, high performance living, which is a methodology I teach, which is basically about living the best life you can um, all day, every day. And it sounds a little bit like wishful thinking. Um, but that's one of the reasons we've actually gotten together for a chat, actually. Mm. And why we decided to say, you know what, we're going to have a chat and we're going to call it Solving All of the World's Problems in 10 Minutes. Um, <laughs> or, or, or what was the subtitle? Um, Resolving the Human Existential Crisis. Marvellous. Yes. So that's, <laughs> so, that's um, so it's a sticky agenda. But we're going to basically try to keep ourselves to like 10 minutes, literally. So I've, I've got me watch and uh, it's saying 10 past, 10 past 1 um, Australian Eastern Daytime. So um, we're going to go for it. And um, during our little chat, our little conflict, feel free to, to jump in. Um, just for, uh, if you've got any questions, any queries, uh, if you want to rant, not too loudly, uh, but you can just put something in the comments below. We'll see it and um, we'll do our best to address your, um, your queries. So, um, so yeah, the human existential crisis, solving Niche, all of the yeah. world's problems in 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> we, we did actually come up with some notes here. One of the notes that we actually put down was, is, um, you know, okay, solving all of the world's problems in 10 minutes, or what we like to call practical tools for surviving in the modern world. That sounds good. You can put that on a can of beans. Everyone would buy it. So, um, <laughs> so okay, look. Yeah. Looking around, and this is one of the things that we've often talked about, um, when we, we catch up for our regular training sessions down here at Bondi Beach, is that um, um, people are finding life really hard at the moment. There are a lot of um, socially um, activated and charged people out there, and you know, there just seems to be a lot of chaos in the world. And as a result of that, not a lot of uh, wellness, happiness, well-being um, in quite a few Anglo-Saxon countries and uh, cultures around the world. We're seeing record levels of, um, of self-harm um, and um, addictive behaviours and, and self-medication. So things like gambling, mm. um, social discord, violence, abuse, um, children are having a hard time of it. One group is on at the other group, the other group, you don't understand me, is, is having a go at another group. So we're seeing sort of a, a massive div, uh, division and fracturing of, mm. of, of society. Um, and so like, it, it's people seem to be finding life very hard. Everyone seems to have an issue um, that, um, that they're biting onto. And you know, one of the points that I, I like to make, um, certainly with a lot of my, with my students, is that look, um, as a species, as humankind, we've been around for, I think, I'm not sure, I think give or take, you know. Yeah, four uh, to six billion, million years. Yeah, we've, yeah. We've, uh, four, uh, we've been around for a while. Mm. We're, we're quite hardy as organisms. We're quite robust. Um, you know, we've survived the ice age. We've survived famines. We've just survived, you know, disease. We've survived wars. Not just a couple of them either. Um, so, you know, where is our resilience gone? We are, we are all better than this. Um, what's going on, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a bloke with the answers. He's, he's a bloke with the answers. So, so, you know, why is everyone having such a rough time of it? Well, it, it, 
basically goes down to the way our nervous system works. So our bodies can only function under two modes. One is sympathetic and the other is parasympathetic. The sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight response. And that shapes our cognition as well. So if you think when we're in fear, our body shuts down, our, li our thoughts become very linear and goal-directed. And so we are in this escape mode. We want to either feed our nervous system with something that uh, consumes our lack, or we want, to, uh, we, we want to escape. So we live in life in a hurry. So we go to work, we on the phone, we have all these distractions to live in a way that is um, feeding the fight or flight mode. So to run away, to fight, to defend, it even comes out in something as simple as having a conversation. So if we have a conversation and there's this fear in the system, we'll have that conversation either in the fight mode, which is aggressive or defensive, or we can, we'll have the conversation in a hurry, which is in the flee mode or, uh, yeah. So that's, that, that, that's the basic mechanism, the, the fear, sympathetic, nervous system is actually underpinning all of our behaviors, all, all of our patterns that we see in our lives. And so any decision-making processes, any, um, anything to do with uh, physiology as well, so diseases that uh, appear in the body are all due to the fight or flight mode, the, this, this chemical imbalance that happens because once the body is in fight, fight or flight, we find that digestion blocks up. Uh, we might lose our appetite, we might lose sleep over thinking and worrying about things. So all of it is due to a synthetic nervous system on overdrive. We can pick it up in very, very basic daily processes, the pace at which people walk, the pace at which people talk. The, so it just gives a very different, I guess, uh, idea on, um, you know, walking, walking the talk, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can certainly, so from, a, from my angle as a, as a martial arts coach and a, a lifestyle and performance coach, I mean, one of the things I often say to students is that, um, that we are a remarkably robust organism. Um, you know, we've not got the sharpest teeth or the longest claws out there in the animal kingdom, but, you know, we're creative enough to give mm. ourselves this, we're at an apex position now as far as the animal kingdom's concerned. But the thing is, a lot of that basic programming that nature built into us still basically has us as a, as a creature that is um, avoiding fear mm. uh, and avoiding a sort of a hostile environment um, yeah. because that's what we're evolved to do. So we actually have a bias towards looking for things which, mm. which will have a, a negative, potentially, and that's the thing, potentially a negative outcome for us. So, for instance, if you read the news, mm. you will gravitate towards things that yeah. create fear in you. The, that's there's just negativity for, bias. Yeah. In, in the psychology, absolutely. So the, that has been the human, the evolutionary lineage that we have come from. So anything that has a vertebrate, the, the chordate, um, in biology we call that chordates, anything that has a vertebrate. Anything that has a spine. Yeah, <laughs> that, 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 yeah. yeah. vertebrate. So uh, anything with a spine will have this response. It's so hardwired into the nervous system. But so is that, as, why, is as, that why they call it the reptilian? Or mm, the reptilian but it, it goes thing? even before that. Oh, really? uh, fish, fish have a spine, and they all have a fear response. So that, that's in fact the fear response dates back all the way into the animal lineage. Yet we as humans not have a choice. So because of our cognitive developments, we now can go. Okay, we have a fear response, and we can also change it. Yeah. Because we, we do have this mechanism of um, the spine, one of the main nerves in the spine is the vagus nerve. Yeah. And that is predominantly what is eliciting this fight or flight or parasympathetic, which is the calm safety response. That's it. So, so the, way, the, way, the way I've had it explained mm -hmm. is that you've got the, you know, the, the fight or flight and mm -hmm. on the other side, rest or digest. Exactly. And you are either in one Mm -hmm. or the other there is exactly. no there is no gray you know there is you know exactly, there is, so yeah. when i you know i teach sistema and like i said our practices mm. are, are a lot of our practice comes down to managing your breathing yeah and being aware of your breathing generally what we will tell people is that when you breathe in and you're feeling that mm. tension in your body you're going to sympathetic which is more 
fight and flight. Yeah. And as you take that long breath out and you feel the body mm. soften and relax, you're going into rest and digest, which exactly. is the sympathetic response. Exactly. So if you go back to what happens in the sympathetic response, everything freezes up, digestion may go out. So all the organs are working against each other. Yeah. The moment you drop into parasympathetic, that's rest and restorative. So your body goes into a state of homeostasis. But because we live in a life in a hurry, that homeostasis is becoming more and more and more marginal. Okay. And so what you find is um, so the first thing that happens when you bring someone into a parasympathetic state is they normally feel very tired because they haven't given themselves the opportunity to rest and restore. So when the body goes into rest and restorative, we take it out of it by hitting stimulants so or whatever it might be. We don't give ourselves the opportunity to feel exhausted. And feeling exhaust, exhaustion is becoming uh, more and more common, so it leads to fatigue and more more dear consequences in uh, pathology. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're kind of stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> because here we are, an organism that is evolved to be chased by saber-toothed tigers. We have a bias towards looking for things which cause us um, anxiety. Mm. Um, but the cool thing is, we have this frontal lobe now. We can, you know, we, we can, um, we're capable of uh, cognitive, you know, reasoning. Yeah. So we can actually make a choice. I mean, sort of on that side, one of um, for for everyone who goes to to my academy, mm -hmm. I actually have a, a a suggested reading list, which is a little bit more than suggested actually. Yeah. It's like read it. <laughs> um, and, and one of the books that I tell everyone to read is uh, Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. Mm. And uh, Viktor Frankl, for those who have read up on him, is someone who, you know, a psychologist who um, during the Second World War mm -hmm. um, found himself in a situation where basically he watched many of his family members in his community um, mm. die, um, unfortunately. So he yeah. had to actually put himself in a position where he didn't become um, adverse to, or overly adversely affected. And so but reducing his survivability. And he used to have a saying that was something along the lines of, I've got, oh, I've got a note here, between stimulus and response, there is choice. And that choice is to head towards growth and freedom. So, mm. you know, you, you can, as bleak as things seem, if you stay in bleak, you will get more of, cognitively, you will yeah. get more of what you're already experiencing because, you know, you've got this wonderful little circuit in the brain, mm -hmm. the RAS, and what the Reticular activating activating system. System. Yeah. Yeah. RAS, reticular activating system. Yeah. That's very good at searching for mm. what you're thinking about. So it's like when you're a kid mm -hmm. and you say, Oh, let's play look for the yellow Volkswagen. All of a sudden, everywhere you see yeah. yellow Volkswagens. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is a case of you have to make a a, a focus mm -hmm. on the experience that you want to create in your life and you will see more of it or you'll become more sensitive to yeah. positive life changes as opposed to just taking what society has a bias towards. Absolutely. And one of the most beautiful thing is uh, once the nervous system is geared towards that, you find that this, this becomes very intrinsic. So if the nervous system is more geared towards the parasympathetic, now the parasympathetic state is uh, very different to the sympathetic state in cognition. So while the the sympathetic nervous system will make you, your thoughts very linear and goal-directed, that is precisely what works very poorly under uncertainty. Right. So that's the great paradox. We live in a world of chaos, and our nervous system, our thought forms, are geared towards what doesn't work under uncertainty. Got you. So it's, it's paradoxical, and the moment the body is into this parasympathetic state, it reshapes the cognition to one that is more open and free. And so when we're thinking creativity, creatively, that is perhaps the best time that we are able to come up with solutions in an uncertain world. So that's the great paradox. So that's the, that's, yeah. that's the actual... So it's not PBGB stuff. It's not tie-dye or um, pseudoscience. That's actually how your brain functions. And you know, and one of the reasons that we often have this conversation, and we thought we'd get it, um, get it recorded and put it out there, is because um, basically it's a case of when you have you live in a society, mm. and then people on mass go with that cognitive bias towards things could be better. Oh, look at this in the news. Mm -hmm. 
it, you know, you, you, you get a a, a shift, mm -hmm. quite literally, a, a shift where you, you get a, almost like a, a group think, which mm -hmm. has a negative bias, a fear-based bias, and then it's basically sort of, if you want to move people en masse, mm -hmm. you know, they will move themselves. You don't necessarily have to create a negative environment. Just get people to, to see perceived threats, even though they may or may not be real, mm. you will behave the same way anyway. And Absolutely. then and then that then gives you a cognitive bias moving forward. You will see everything in that frame moving forward. But mm -hmm. as I saying, but you do have a choice. So because I'm always trying to think winding it back because otherwise we'd be here for hours. <laughs> but I'm thinking about winding it yeah. back to okay, how are we solving the world's problems? I mean, giving people a blueprint. So if someone's sitting there, I can't pay my rent. Uh -huh. You know, my cat's just been sick on the carpet. Yeah. You know, how do I, you know, modify or change my, my context? Yeah. So you, you see the, the exact thinking there. I can't pay my bills. Very linear. Rather than a, a different focus, oh, I have bills to pay. What can I do? So the only way you can come up with those, the, that, that thought stream is if the body is feeling safe. You might not have money in the bank, but if the body feels safe, if it's, if, it, if, it, if it's relaxed, then the cognition is able to cope. Well, coping isn't quite the right word because coping means we, we're doing it through resilience. This is a much more sophisticated mechanism. It's, it, it's more like the body viscerally feels where it can go and what it can do. Got you. So it's a, so, it's a very visceral thing rather than the body building up resilience and resilience is due to stress and that is toxic for the body. Okay. Here the parasympathetic is in a state of, state of homeostasis. The body feels safe, all the organ systems are working and what you find is that visceral response is very much linked with the cognition. Okay. So the autonomic nervous system, the nervous system that drives all the processes that happens in our body by itself, digestion, breathing, heart rate, um, immune system, all of these autonomic functions are part of the autonomic nervous system. What you find is the autonomic nervous system, our visceral, is working uh, synergistically with the central nervous system. Okay. So that is okay. what we call neurovisceral so integration. It reminds me, and this is where I'm going to get really basic here. <laughs> so it reminds me of a line from a movie that used to that read, what was it, free free your ass and your mind will follow. So if you can create a bodily sensation of calm and relaxation, mm. cognitively, your brain will operate in a way which is more coherent with the body and you'll be able to be more creative, mm -hmm. uh, more expressive, uh, more solutions focused, more positively focused. And yeah. as a result, your life situation is more likely to change in a way mm -hmm. that is more beneficial for you as opposed to being stuck in a rut. Exactly, so if you, if that's the best example of this, is when you watch children play. Mm. They're feeling safe, they, and when they feel safe, they try things that they might not. Yeah. So children often do things which um, may seem illogical, yet they, they get, all they do is they're having a go at, you know, yeah. something that, uh, that might not work, but there is no fear of failure. Because it's about play and, and fear cannot coexist. Got you, got you. Okay. Yeah. So basically, so when it comes down to say solving the world's problems in a broader context, so it's basically about first of all, you need to make that decision. Mm. So you may be stressed, you know, maybe not feeling the best, anxious, but you need to actually get yourself into a point where you are viscerally feeling better, mm. feeling well in the body, and from there on, then you will create a situation where. Um, cognitively, you're more on point and able to change your situation. Absolutely. I mean, if you think about the nervous system as a tree, so the tree has branches, and the branches we will look at is the two hemispheres of the brain. It has a stem, and the stem is actually the brain stem. Yeah. And then it has a root structure, and the root structure is the spine. If the root structure is not being nourished or nurtured, we cannot expect the branches to flourish. Okay. So we take care of the visceral, and then 
Okay. The cognitive which, wheel. Which is a point that I like to make. Uh, mm. People, for some reason, I don't know if it's like the last few hundred years, um, the way that sort of Western medicine has looked at things, that the, the mind and the body are separate. I, mm. I, I don't go with that. <laughs> because it's, yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's okay. Yeah. But that's a whole other conversation. We'll have that one later. Yeah. So basically, so, you know, solving the world problems. The way I like to look at it is then is that because you, you do need that, you know, get the body moving, get it out there, start to feel good through the body. Um, that way you want to be, you know, stimulating the mind. You'll be able to shift your context. Um, mm. So seeing opportunity whereby you would, may not have noticed opportunities yeah, before. Absolutely. So, you know, watching the quality of your company. Um, you don't get your news off of Facebook. <laughs> you know, don't, don't put yourself in the middle of conversations. Which that's the are, irony. Are, no, that's it. That's the irony. <laughs> don't put yourselves in uh, uh, situations which will bring up unnecessary conflict for you. Mm. And, and try to uh, shift your paradigm, shift your context. Mm. And it's a case of, you know, the old... You know, you you know, you need to almost fake it in a funny way um, because there is a lag. Mm. You're faking it until you make well, it. Well, faking it is an interesting one because it comes to the placebo effect. Yeah. You know, we might think we're faking it, but, but physiologically, yeah. that's a different uh, that's a different state. So as long as your body believes it, mm. the the mind will, will concur with it. Yeah. And okay. But if yeah. you're in a situation where you're telling yourself, I'm angry, I'm upset, life sucks, you're going to get more of the same. Of course, and those psychological thoughts now has a visceral imprint as well. And it'll affect your health. Okay. Yeah. So, solving the world's problems, because I think we've gone for more than 10 minutes. Uh -huh. If we were to sort of like to, to wrap it up, I mean, one of the things I was going to mention is just you know, to manage the parasympathetic response. Um, one of the things that I recommend that people do is look at their breathing techniques mm. uh, and practice things um, like um, practical breathing or something mm. that's often referred to as square breathing where, mm -hmm. you know, if you're feeling less than great, just to bring the adrenals under control if you're not feeling mm. the best, um, just to, if you like, bring the body and the mind back into coherence with each other. It's Very just, much. Like, yeah, it's just... So the mind-body coherence you're talking about yeah. is exactly what I'm talking about between the integration between autonomic and central nervous system. In fact, to be clear, it feels that this is the central nervous system and that is guiding our yeah. cognition. So it's the other way around. In fact, 90% of the information traveling in the vagus nerve are parents that are going up into it's, the brain. It's up from the brain into, up yeah. from the body into the brain. Into the brain, right? the brain than, yeah. into the body. I, I, I mm. heard that as well. So, yeah. so I know that's so mindful breathing techniques. So mm. if you're doing your yoga, that's fine. Um, some people find that uh, things like meditation during swimming, and it's because they're managing their breath. They're actually, yeah. It's thoughtful, mindful mm. breath practice, or even like I say, square breathing, which is uh, mm. breathing in for a count of four, yeah. pausing for a count of four, out for a count of four, mm. and then pausing for four again. So literally, it's just in, pause, out, pause. So mm -hmm. that's what we call it square breath, because you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're going for the four cycles of breathing rather than just in, out. Mm -hmm. which will tend to put the and I guess the, the big one in state. breathing also would be breathing into the diaphragm. Yeah, yeah. Because once the diaphragm... Not, 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 breathing, yeah. in the, not breathing in the chest, <laughs> yeah. breathing in the chest. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. okay, so I guess the solution is breathe. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, so, it's, so you've got the body side of things, which is the breathing, yeah. and then sort of the more cognitive side, which is that, look, you, you have this system um, mm. of the mind, which is you'll get more of what you'll focus on. So be very mindful as to what you give your time and waking thoughts to. Yeah. Um, because so that the way I'd like your to, life experience. Mm, yeah. I'd like to put it as um, you get more of what you have. You are perfect. Yeah. You get more of what you have. People are saying, give me more money. Um, <laughs> so, you know, give me more money, give me more of this, give me more of that. But wanting the same of, as, as, of, as, as, wanting more of something is not the same of having something. So it's, mm. you know, it is sort of, the old saying of, you know, it is fake it till you make it. So it's not project on faking it. Yeah. No, you actually have to put yourself and in that position. Yeah. yeah. And actually be in that space now. Mm. So one of the things that, another saying that I like is, um, um, the purpose of life is to live a life of purpose. So in other words, if you're putting yourself, giving yourself a positive focus, positive frame on something that you see as something intrinsically Healing to you, mm. a good life, time with family, mm. um, and you focus on that. 
it draws energy away from aspects of uh, your experience which may be more negative. Mm. And so it's like the gratitude principle. The more you have yeah. to be grateful for, the more you notice to be grateful for, mm -hmm. and so you're having a positive life experience from, Absolutely. from a and practical standpoint. So with gratitude, is gratitude something you're doing cognitively? Or is it coming from intrinsic? Well, it yeah. should be. It should be something that you feel. Yeah. I mean, the way I, I like to explain it is, um, if you're walking down the road, mm. and you see a little child. Little child, you know, smiles at you. Mm. You feel good inside. Absolutely. Okay. So mm. you know, gratitude isn't. Yeah, I have a nice car. If you don't actually feel mm. um, from the core of your being that this is a good thing, I've done the right thing, mm. I'm enjoying this experience. Well, then it's in your head. And if it's Absolutely. only, if it's only in your head, as far as your body's concerned. It's not real, so it's about more about creating those peak experiences that you actually feel positive mm. in the body, not Absolutely just I think there. this is a good idea. Mm. The peak experiences are there because it happens intrinsically, viscerally. So we we are so connected with it in this moment. Yeah. So in fact, the breathing ties in with all of this as well because. There's a, there's a very basic biological phenomenon of like where we inhale that raises the heart rate and when we exhale it slows it down. So in fact what it means is the breath is the bridge between anything that happens out there and anything that's happening within. So in fact the heart is responsive to the breath and it's responsive to this moment. So if the heart is rising, we're in discomfort. Of course, it doesn't matter how much you try to convince the mind, the body is not feeling it. Yeah. So we bring the heart rate down, resting heart rate is lower, and suddenly, ah, oh, we see something resonates within, we viscerally feel it. Yeah. Okay. The okay. heart is responsive to this moment. So I suppose really we're gonna wind up now because you've had more than our 10 minutes, but I think <laughs> if we had a point to round it up around, I mean, like, like we were saying, you know, the, the point of life is a life of purpose. So mm. what you really need to do is is really connect with things that bring you joy, things that bring you pleasure. You need to focus on those things first, not later. So you need a positive expectation. Um, you need mm. to basically pilot your life experience. Because if you're not, you're going to get whatever the prevailing society's whims are. Um, mm. And that may not necessarily be healthy. Absolutely. Um, and that, you know, another one of those sayings that, you know, you, you don't have to. You can just go along with the the flotsam and jetsam of, of, of life, the ocean mm. of life. But, you know, one of the things that, you know, it often comes up in these memes is that, you know, you know, if you're, if you believe that you are truly here to do more than just pay bills and die, you need to make a decision about, <laughs> you know, what is that thing that you're here to do more of? Mm. What, are the, what are those causes that you're here to donate your time and your effort and your energy to? Uh, and it is usually, from what I've seen, it's good to connect yourself to a cause or a purpose is, is bigger than your own, Absolutely. Your own as yeah. well. Um, and that way, we all benefit. Mm. Otherwise, life is crap and boring, and we all deserve a bit better than that. But it's something we do have to work towards and, and, uh, and fight yeah. for in one way or another. So, really well summed up, Cal. Oh, uh, cheers, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not even the doctor. So, um, parting, parting words for our, our buddies out there in Facebook Live Land. Mm, uh, this whole concept of following your heart has a deeper meaning. Yeah. It is very deeply ingrained in our nervous system. The visceral response is really the response of the heart going, what, what do I actually um, care about? Yeah. Yeah. And the moment we respond from that, that point, it's not driven by the self-centric beliefs of the mind. The heart is connected to all, so it's a very holistic approach. Ah, oh, superb. Yeah. Okay, and so, so my little sum up bit, okay, well look, the way I see it is this, right? Um, in a hundred years, you're gonna be dead anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you might as well, you know, so you know, just make a decision. What sort of uh, life experience do you want? Um, so, you know, but you do have to make that decision and, and work at it, basically. Mm. So um, I shall sign off. Um, and so with my usual thing, which is uh, live full, die empty. And um, we'll, we'll catch you a little bit later. But um, thank you for joining us. And uh, any um, questions you have, or if you'd like to see us do, you know, the K&K &K show, some other issues in future, just put them in the uh, discussion thread um, below and, um, and we'll catch up with you later. So yeah. that's a goodbye from him. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. And uh, and goodbye from me. Thanks guys. Yeah. Thank you.